Hi everyone, I'm Willie Crawford and I'd like to thank you for joining us on this special webinar where we'll be talking about uh, how to use Google AdWords to drive leads and clients and traffic and sales to your business. And I'm joined tonight by uh, Mr. A.M. Khan. Let me pull up his uh, website here for you. And uh, you can see from the page here it says that he provides expert online business solutions and Google AdWords management services for all types of business. His impeccable track record consists of helping small businesses become large volume businesses, taking medium sized operations and getting them listed in Inc. 500 fastest growing companies to even larger publicly traded companies and making their shareholders become very profitable. His company, Concepts, is heavily engaged in developing Google AdWords software tools and Google AdWords management programs for ad agencies and business owners worldwide. His name and the name of his products are frequently featured in Entrepreneur.com and referenced in many bestsellers and are often talked about in business communities all over the world. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to welcome A.M. onto the call. Uh, that's him on the left there. Hey, Willie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us. And the format for our listeners is basically I've I've written down a uh, about ten questions I wanted to ask or discuss as points of discussion. The slides are to me largely just to keep me on track. And then uh, if during the course of the call, other points or questions come up, I'm certainly um, willing to uh, bring those in to the discussion too. But I want to make sure we cover some of the points that were brought up in other discussions earlier in the week on Facebook and Twitter and, and places like that. So I, I do have some talking points. Um, a little about myself first, though. I, I used to actually do uh, SEO and AdWords uh, professionally. I used to. Uh, I even worked on sites for people like Bob Proctor, who was in the movie The Secret, and Paul Hartunian. And I taught a course on pay per clicks way back uh, in 2003. But it has changed an awful lot since then, and a lot of marketers are noticing that, first of all, it's fairly expensive, or it can be, and so you, you can't really afford to make mistakes. You need to know what you're doing, and uh, AM makes that his uh, business to, to really stay on top of things, so I, I wanted him onto the call so he could share some of those things with you. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to have AM tell us a little about his background and how he first got involved in AdWords. Hey Willie, uh, again thank you for, for putting this together and I thank everyone taking their time to come on to this call and really getting a, a broad understanding of the vastness of, of Google AdWords and, and, and getting right into the meat of the matter. <clears throat> I first started off working for a large industrial print publication um, back in 2002 and basically from there what had happened is that that company transitioned their entire uh, offline business to to get ready for what was going to explode um, you know converting it into the online platform um, so I had a lot of experience in terms of how the the advertisers at that point were seeing a lot of um, you know great value in in the internet right at that point so that's where I that's where I got involved and at that point um, the company that I used to work for uh, they really didn't have a, a a Google AdWords platform to offer their their customers so I've taken it upon myself to really look into it and start um, you know getting the basics of it they, they basically gave me the the uh, the responsibility of learning the ins and outs of it, and you know it was really successful. From there, I went off to a private equity firm, who had basically converted their business model from telecom to to internet, and I was fortunate enough to um, deal with hundreds of their properties, and uh, and their business units, and really take those incubators and really make them profitable. And a lot of that has to do with Google AdWords. It's, it's really exciting when I talk about this because you know, the, the progression of how I've seen Google AdWords come into play with businesses really has a lot to do with my exposure in the industry um, early on. And because I've had so much experience dealing with, uh, with small to large projects early on, you know, it really enabled me to understand the mechanics 
of, of the beast itself within AdWords, the system itself, and why it, it was a reward system versus back then, you know, we had Overture, which is really just a bidding platform. Uh, whoever bid the highest is going to get the, the highest uh, uh, position within right. that, that, that platform. So it was, it was really interesting to see how the AdWords platform overtook the original platform that was built before that um, with Overture. And it was all because of how you handle um, you know, your optimization points and understanding your business um, and understanding your dynamics first. So uh, it was really, it, to me, it was really something that was, you know, just really profound in the very beginning. It was just dynamic, and I never really forgotten about it. And till today, I use those principles. Excellent. Let me pull up my next slide and see what I, my next talking point was. Okay. Uh, and I I started out uh, using Overture too. I, I certainly remember that it was whoever bid the highest amount uh, was placed highest for that keyword, and uh, so it was very easy to figure out. And yet Google AdWords has all kinds of quality factors built into it, and so it's not quite as simple as it as it used to be. Now, why do you prefer Google over other types of traffic? Well, there, there are a lot of different types of traffic out there. Uh, while, while there are other types of traffics out there, um, certainly, you know, I always advise my clients and vendors and anyone that, that I touch uh, to basically make sure that you never put all of your eggs into one basket. So, so, so to preface that, I would say that the, uh, the most important um, element in your basket should always be Google. Um, you know, Google, uh, the traffic is you know, really the most effective traffic uh, when used correctly. Um, there's, there's a lot of, first and foremost, their platform uh, provides uh, the advertiser with so many different features, um, you know, so many different networks. They have the search network, they have the display network, uh, they have YouTube, they have, uh, you know, mobiles. I mean, it, it, it's, really, it's really a vast platform, and being the fact that, you know, there's a lot of us that really go to the internet to do a lot of research first rather than, you know, for example, go to our doctor or even consult with our spouses. We would, you know, dump our question in our minds into Google.com just to search for some answers. And, right. and when you have that, when you have that kind of a marketing tool, uh, you certainly do not want to ignore that. Um, even with AdWords, I mean, it's, it's, it's also one of the most measurable platforms. I mean, you know, they provide you with conversion codes. They provide you with data as real time as possible. Um, so you can start adjusting um, your message or your strategy if certain things aren't working. And, and, and to go to what I was saying earlier, it's also the most scalable, meaning if you've already mastered at the Google.com search only level, you may then want to go to uh, the search partners, uh, which are other uh, search engines that Google uh, partnered with, and right. the display network, which you know, Willie, it's uh, you know it's reaching about eighty percent of all internet users. Yeah, we, we we mentioned Google uh, and compared to other types of traffic. I'm going to briefly mention the other types of traffic that are out there. We we tend to teach that there, there's three ways to get traffic. One is to buy it, which is essentially what you're doing when you use AdWords. The other one is to create it, and with that you're typically writing articles, creating videos, doing press releases, things like that where you're creating content to attract the search engines. And then the third way is to, to borrow it, and for that I, I typically think of joint ventures or affiliate programs where you're getting other people who already have the attention of the traffic to send it to you. and as you've mentioned, uh, one of the easiest ways to do it for most people is to actually just go out and buy it because that way you get a consistent uh, quality of traffic and you get it over a long time. In the internet marketing space, we do a lot of product launches where you get somebody to um, you get somebody to go out and do a mailing to their their database and. Um, but they send you traffic, but it's short-term traffic, and as soon as the launch is over with, that traffic falls off and the sales go away. So you, you right. really do, if you're running a real business, want something that's going to keep sending you the same quality of traffic consistently. And uh, 
as you pointed out, it's hard to beat Google AdWords for that. Right, especially if you know your metrics ahead of time and know what your customer's worth. Um, you know, paying for traffic is definitely the way to go. Right, it's it's really risk free. I mean, uh, so so many internet marketers, which is the crowd I deal with a lot, but I also deal with small business owners. But the internet marketers they keep you know looking for ways to uh, get you know traffic free, and what they don't acknowledge is they're often trading their time, putting in all that effort. And when they look at how much time and effort they put into generating traffic, some of these methods probably are paying them like you know less than a dollar an hour, and uh, so as long as you know your numbers, and also, you know, with, with the, even with the business owners, it's uh, looking at return on investment. If you can spend, you know, a dollar and get back two dollars or a dollar and a half buying traffic, you've you've earned, you know, you've doubled your money in, in like, you know, a day or whatever. So it, it's like a huge ROI too. And a lot of people don't think about that. We we look at the internet and we think that, you know. You should be able to pump a dollar in and get back ten or something ridiculous like that. I don't think that's realistic for most products and services, but uh, I don't think they'll find traffic cheaper and, and more measurable. That's another uh, thing that you, you touched on. Uh, people using yellow pages and billboards and radio spots and uh, all those things. They don't. They often don't really measure their results. I mean, they. People coming into the doctor office or the car dealership may know they found them in the yellow pages, but uh, they don't know how well it's working. They don't know how many people came in that way. But with the pay-per-click, you, you, you get the metrics. You get something that shows you how well it's working. And in, in real time, I mean, you could just log right into your control panel and see right then and there how many clicks you got. And you can track it all the way through to the sale depending on how it's set up. Isn't that correct? One thing that Google has that other pay-per-click uh, search engines don't really have um, is, is, you know, Google really takes the importance of their searchers, uh, you know, and values them more than an advertiser. Um, and, and, and what that does is it, 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 it really forces the advertiser to um, rethink some of their offers uh, because the market is telling them that, hey, you know, your ad that you just showed in front of me, yeah, I clicked on it, all right, um, but, you know, when I landed on the landing page, it just didn't talk to me, you know, so if you have no conversions on that end, so you know it's your landing page, if your click-through rates are low, you know it's your ad, and, you know, other, other factors like your positions and your coverage when it comes to, um, you know, where your ad is and, and, and what your CPCs are, uh, Google really, uh, you know, they really force the advertiser to um, really pay attention to the offer, which, you know, at the end of the day, it's really making these advertisers more money. Right, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it really is one of those things where, ah, uh, you know, I hate the red tape, but, you know, in one sense, the red tape is really, you know, the red tape is being formed by the actual searcher. Not, not really Google. Google is just the, you know, it's the referee here um, that, that provides a reward system. You know, a lot of good advertiser who has high click-through rate, high quality score, good amount of conversions, um, they typically end up spending way less than some of the larger competitors. And, you know, I mean, while other platforms are, are trying to be like this platform, Google has always been about that. So it's interesting to see um, how other platforms are trying to come close to this type of platform, but you know Google has already cornered the market, and everyone knows that if there's any kind of research that needs to be done, uh, they're not going to go to Facebook and other types of traffic. They, they usually go to Google when they have a question in their mind. Right, and and you 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 alluded to uh, to bounce rate, where Google can tell when someone is searching and they click on a, a link and go to a website and don't find what they're looking for and they click the back button or leave the page. So Google can tell that even though you uh, attract them to your page, you sort of tricked them to the page and, and that right. they didn't find what they were looking for. So Google sort of penalizes the, the advertiser for that. Oh, right, right, definitely, definitely. And and again, like I, like I said earlier, it really is for the betterment of both, you know, um, for for the the advertiser um, as well as Google because Google obviously they're making their money from the advertiser um, when the users keep on coming back and clicking on that same ad and performing the same 
uh, uh, type of action. So it really is a, a great reward system. It's just that a lot of people, they'll probably get frustrated not understanding this right off the top. And, you know, it, it becomes one of those things where, you know, Google is supposed to be a simple system. It's really complicated. So that's, that's, where, the, uh, that's where people actually start dropping off. Yeah, and I, and I know that we have a variety of listeners uh, who will be hearing this. Some are small business owners who own brick-and-mortar businesses, and they certainly understand the value of each new customer. You know, that, that uh, doctor or that lawyer, uh, they know that a, a new client is worth quite a bit, so they have no problem with spending that kind of money. A lot of other um, marketers who sell lower ticket items may not uh, may feel actually that Google is, is too expensive I, even some of the, the the small business owners may feel that it's too expensive um, you know, how would you respond to, to that first of all the fact that they think it's too expensive well you know just like just like some of the other things the points that I made earlier about how it's the platform really forces the advertiser to think about their business because um, if, if, if the if the user are you know they're not clicking on their ad or you know something's not happening once they click on their ad, it, it tells it tells a lot about the offer itself and you know what selection of keywords they've selected, and you know the 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 entire offer itself. I mean, it really forces them to think. Um, you know, where do I change? Do I change my keywords? Do I change my ads? Um, you know, and, and, and that's where the expense comes in. You know, I mean, if, if, if you start selecting the wrong keywords and you start promising them something on the ad and then they land on your page and they don't really get that, um, of course, it's, it's going to become, you know, it's going to become really expensive really fast. And just right. like, you know, <clears throat> just like anything else that's worthwhile, you'll have competition. You know, that's, that's just, you know, a golden rule. Um, like when you advertise on the yellow pages, you know, you, you fight to stand out. I mean, there's no real measurability there. Um, like when you when you alluded to sending out an email um, via JVs or other borrowed traffic, um, yeah, the spike is there. Um, but later on, when you have your own list, you fight to have your mail open. You know, it's it's it really is one of those things where you know AdWords or any other platform is no different. The only thing with AdWords that you have over these other platforms is the, you know, is the data that you get, um, actionable data that you can take and tweak and start seeing the results become more and more consistent with your traffic. Um, so so to, to, to just answer that in terms of um, being too expensive, and, you know, it, it really boils down to some of the bad habits, you know, just dumping a bunch of keywords into a particular ad group, not having any specific message uh, in your ad to uh, to that ad group. Um, you know, you start getting all these clicks, and if you have low quality score, you're gonna you're gonna pay higher cost per click, especially if you have a high maximum bid. You're gonna start paying those, and you know that's where you you really start looking at it where you feel like it's not gonna work. And so it, it really, really forces you to, to know your numbers. You have to know that you know, out of every 100 clicks that you get, that X number are going to buy and how much they're worth to you over time so you can know because realistically you can afford to lose money even on the front end to gain a new customer if you know you're going to make X number of new sales during the course of the year. So And once you get that customer, uh, they're going to stick with you if you provide them with good service. So it, it really isn't that expensive. I think it's a lot less expensive than most other ways of generating traffic where you, quite frankly, I watch most people with web-based businesses in particular just struggle and, and never really get enough traffic to make their businesses viable. I mean, that's the, the one thing they struggle with the most. And, you know, so you've got thousands of products out there on how to generate more website traffic, yet we've got Google that is the biggest search engine in the world. And uh, it's where people know to go. I mean, Google and something means searching for it now. It, it's become a, a, a verb, you know. So um, it, oh, it, it is definitely it is huge, and uh, so people definitely need to be there now. Let, let's touch on the fact that it's it's uh, some people would think it's too competitive for for the new marketer to get into. Someone who who looks at a, a uh, their niche and they already see that there's a bunch of other people already at the top for their keywords and they think well you know that's a, that's too tough for me to even try to figure out all right I mean you know especially if you're a newbie AdWords um, 
uh, advertiser. I mean, the beautiful thing about the reward system is that you know, as a as a newbie advertiser, you're really looked at new, as as a neutral advertiser, meaning you don't have any history built in. You do, it's just like having a credit report. You know, um, you start off and the the competitors that you see on the real estate of Google.com, uh, you know, their coverage, you know, the key word here is coverage. You know, um, if they're really good advertisers, they have a high click-through rate and they have a, a good enough budget to sustain the, uh, the hunger of the marketplace where, you know, it's a huge, huge, huge market. Um, any new advertiser can come in and, and compete. The difference is between the newer advertiser and those who's been playing the game for a while, and especially if they've been optimizing, is that it'll take a longer period of time to break in and to really start getting higher coverage. So, so that's the only difference I would say, especially if you're going into a really, you know, uh, a huge competing marketplace. Uh, you, you, you know, using the metrics um, that you know, starting off right, using the right keywords going off slow and really building your click-through rate um, initially you'll have your coverage will grow slowly you know month to month to month and okay. and you know it's it's definitely not you know nothing is too competitive for new marketers to get into um, because you you still get that coverage you may not be able to bid on you know certain keywords initially but you could bid on some of the longer tail keywords and really come out with ads that are specific that the competitor you know you really do your research up front if you know that you have let's say you know twenty dollars a day to play with with Google AdWords and you're in the you know you're in the diet niche okay right you know you really want to start looking at your product first okay what do I offer that my competitors do not or or you know how can I make my offer you know if not similar something a little better than them Okay, and then you have to start looking at certain angles. Okay, if you've noticed that a long tail keyword with the word diet in it um, has you know okay amount of traffic, um, you feel like you know you can enter that conversation in that searcher's head and create a specific landing page. Right. That will get that will get them to go from typing in that particular keyword, uh, clicking on your ad, going to your landing page, and taking an action. Um, you, you know, you, it may take you a while to come up with a bunch of different uh, elements, but you know, you play it that way, then you'll notice that your growth pattern will go up and your coverage will increase. And now you've you've got a sustainable business where now you can start competing on the higher you know level terms. Um, what a lot of people do is they start bidding on higher level terms right off the top. And they really don't do that level of market research, and the coverage that they get is so small. So let's say you know they only show, you know, five percent of the time when somebody's searching for that keyword. Right. They're num they're number seven. Their their ad may not be even you know the search may not even look at their head, and now they have a you know uh, a bad click through rate because you know no one clicked on their ad, and slowly but surely um, the quality score will go down. Their CPC will go up, and Google won't even start showing them. So, so that's what happens to people who they sit there and they look at their campaign day after day, and they aren't getting any clicks at all. They're wondering why they aren't getting any clicks. It's very often that they they are targeting the wrong um, keywords. Uh, I, I, I like I, I used to teach you know to go go for the long tail keywords. I mean something like um, insurance or diet or loan are to me really terrible keywords or or lawyer you know pick a very specific type of diet or a very specific type of law that lawyer that you're looking for and, and or that you know people are looking for and then you're going to grab the attention of the your ideal customer somebody's actually looking for you so uh so do you, you sort of encourage people to go with you know those three to five word phrases rather than just one or two words you know when they're when they're targeting keywords or do you teach them to or do you sort of encourage them to to put together as large a list of keywords as they can come up with that makes sense 
Oh no! I mean, the the way the way the way I would set up any campaign really has to do with the tolerance of the advertiser. Okay. If the advertiser comes in and says, "Hey, I have a hundred thousand dollars. I want to get into the diet niche. You know, how can we make some money?" The first thing I would say, put on your brakes. Let's see, you know, let's see what your business is about. Okay. What's your what's your revenue plan? You know, I mean, how are you planning to make money? Is this a long term business plan? Are you looking for uh, do you have any data that shows your life cycle customer value? You know, it, it really comes down to the basic of what it is that your business is about. Now, if you know, for example, if you had um, a hundred, uh, if you had twenty dollars a day, which is about five to six hundred dollars a month in ad spend, you know, your target, especially if you know your, your one customer is worth a thousand dollars or one customer is worth five hundred dollars, you know that that budget has to at least break even or go beyond that. Right. Okay. Um, so, so it all comes down to that. If somebody comes in with twenty dollars a day and they want to play the diet niche, then yes, long tail strategy has to come into play, and specific landing pages has to be created um, that talks to those. You see, we can, we're not just going to dump a bunch of long tail keywords in one ad group and create a you know one landing page. We're going to create, you know, specific landing pages for this subset of keywords that have the long tail in it that have that have a, a common theme. Okay, or so, you know, so you're pulling, you're going to use the uh, pay per clicks to pull people into a, a very specific funnel and, and take them on a very specific path after they hit that that website. Correct. So 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 for, for you know for someone who's um, who's looking to just get into the to the game. Um, and want to make a profit right away, you know, they may get disappointed because, you know, using a twenty dollar a day strategy for a large niche like that, you're looking at probably anywhere from you know six to seven months to get any real valuable data because of the market you're in and because of the budget that you're going into. But that doesn't mean that within that seven months that you're not breaking even or pro being profitable. Your only question may be, how can I turn it on where I can get all the traffic now, and, but you, your, your account isn't, isn't ready for that yet. Okay. You know, we, we talk about uh, it being expensive and competitive, but really you don't want to get as many visitors as you want. You want to get the right visitors, but right. also you, you probably encourage people to, to capture those visitors on, into some type of a database so they can follow up. So even if the, the lead isn't converting into immediate customers, uh, it, it's building an asset that's worth quite a bit. Depending. Oh, on, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the beautiful thing about, you know, over the last few months, um, actually it's, it's about a year right now, Google introduced, um, you know, remarketing. And you know, I mean, this feature just by itself is is amazing. You know, I mean, here you you, you put a snippet of code on your site, and if anyone lands on it, they're cookied with a remarketing tag, which basically means that you can drive traffic through AdWords, you can drive traffic through PPV, you can drive traffic through JVs. Um, if they land on your page, you're in the AdWords remarketing list. Right. And and then you can create a specific remarketing message because you know they've come, they've come to your website you know they've seen a particular message on your site you may have a promotion you may have you know you may have some other you know uh, offer that you might want to drive them back to so they're your audience like you know that they're specifically interested in what you have to say because they've landed on it okay I, I didn't I didn't follow that change when Google made it so you're saying you can spend money to attract a customer to a site. You know where they're interested in. You can then turn around and sort of essentially resell that customer back into Google's uh, Ad AdSense program. Uh, well, that, I mean, first and foremost, you can you can re you can resell them on anything within your website. Okay. So so if they landed on um, you know let's say a dog training website, and you know. Whether they've taken an action or not, depending on how you segment your remarketing list. Right. So for this example, let's just say you know the fact that they've touched my website, they're on my remarketing list. Um, let's say three months down the road, I have a special offer um, for my dog training uh, DVD. I create a remarketing campaign inside of my AdWords account, 
and I click that list that I built. So I'm only going to go after those who actually touched my website. Okay. And I'm going to create a specific message saying, um, you know, um, dog training DVDs, you know, 50% off for a limited time. You know, I know that they're interested in dog training. Now, let's say they go off to any site onto the display network. Right. Especially if we leave it, like, broad, as broad as possible. They could go to a bicycle training website, for example. Nothing related to dog training. And they'll see your ad. Same person who saw your ad will see your ad again. So they may think you're a huge brand advertiser at that point. Okay. Um, okay. But you're getting their attention again. So that's the beauty of really, if you haven't been able to do anything with them, you may want to try a different angle some other way because you know that they're still interested. Otherwise, why would they come to your website? Um, that they have an interest in that topic, you just haven't sold them, you know, or, or you haven't got them to uh, a desirable action. Now you have a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, you know, however long that cookie lasts on their computer. Okay, so so with the remarketing plan, the, the, the customer is attracted to your site based on a certain keyword, and Google tags them with a cookie, and now as they surf around, Google knows their interest, and because you bid on that niche, Google continues to show your ad and follows them around essentially. Exactly, especially when you start creating a, a, a campaign around um, a different promotion uh, or, or, or different offer, it's really effective. And, and it, it really goes in, on the top of their minds and, and you know, it creates that brand illusion that you know, these guys must be you know, they, they, you know, they're everywhere, so right, it must right. be really good. That, that's very um, powerful because the, the more a customer sees your name, your face, it's, it's like the big companies like Coke or whoever who does all the ads just to get their name out there and brand themselves. And now the smaller players can do that too. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, you know, another thing is, you know, although remarketing is great, you still want to, you still want to go back to the same principle and try to convert all the people that comes through your landing page the first time um, because you know you 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 want to be able to segment your remarketing list to those who actually took action versus those who didn't, because you know for those who didn't, you're still going after them. Um, you know you, you certainly don't want to spend any more money than you need to, so you want to be able to go after those who are who are not you know in that um, desirable action list that they've taken versus those who have taken an action. Okay. Um, which goes back to what you were saying about. Um, the bounce rate, um, one of the other things that Google looks for is um, a repeat visitors, you know, returning visitors. Okay. So let's say you, your landing page is about, you know, a free video course or a newsletter. Um, so they opted in, okay. Uh, now you're sending them an email every two or three days and you're sending them to another part of your web page. So let's say video lesson two dot HTML. Um, that tag use uh, Google tags that user as a re, uh, return visitor. Okay. Which which increases your quality score. Yeah, okay. and I I don't think most uh, Google advertisers even think about that. You know that Google isn't just looking at when they click from Google or from one of the uh, content network uh, providers and. That person describes on the site. Google knows that the person's been on the site before and tracks that. So that's all in their their algorithm, all in their formula. That's that, that's very useful. Oh yeah, I mean, if if you were to if you if your landing page was about you know seven seven video tips on how to increase X Y Z, um, you know, if you're not selling them in the first you know week or two on anything and providing them true value, that's what Google really wants to see. They want to see that you're providing real value to their visitors. And they, and they, and they track and record that based on, you know, returning visitors, um, how long they spend on your site. All these, all these factors really help you as an advertiser uh, increase your, your quality within the AdWords system. Okay. And, you know, and, and it really, if you, if, you look, if you look at what I said earlier, Google kind of forces you to rethink um, what your user wants, and what the user wants is to feel comfortable um, with 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 you know with the advertiser before making any kind of purchase. I mean that's just you know common sense when you look at you know the the economics of everything. You know when you go to a to a mall or when you go outside to a street vendor, 
um, you know, you have <clears throat> you have that hesitation from a street vendor versus a retail store. Okay. You know, if you if you buy something from a street vendor, most likely he he or she may not be there tomorrow if, if anything goes wrong with the product. Versus a retail store, you know, you have a thirty day return policy. Okay, um, and so I know that I know that Google's in the business. That their real business is selling advertising. Although, you know, when you look at the the fact that they sort of not only but they sort of force advertisers' behavior or enforce advertisers' behavior. So you wonder what their bigger purpose is. Um, you, you may may have been getting ready to touch on that, but you know, I, I spend a lot of time in the internet marketing space where uh, it's just people selling other people's products for a commission, typically, and uh, they're just trying to get somebody to look at a, a sales page and and uh, make a sale and make a commission, and they're trying to get that traffic there cheap enough where it's profitable. Um, so, so a lot of internet marketers, as my slide says, they were slapped or they were banned by Google recently. I mean, a lot of them. What's your take on that? And do you think that affiliates still can use Google to to uh, generate traffic at a profit? And, and you know, why did Google do this? Um, well, <clears throat> I, I write frequently on my blog, um, AdWordsBuzz.com. Okay. And 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 one of the things I wrote early on was that you know Google is now focusing all of their energy to become a trust platform um, where you know they've got they've got the heat you know from Facebook they've got the heat from from Microsoft and all these other players who are you know really get just really coming together to take down Google and you would think like okay well Google should know this they shouldn't um, ban anybody you know they should you know they should embrace everybody right um, <clears throat> And you know it threw a lot of people off. Even even for a while, it threw me off because we weren't getting clear answers. And you know after the after the the dust settled, um, it's clear as day why they're doing this. It's not the affiliates. It's not the particular affiliate model. It really is. You know going back to everything that I've said in this call. You know it's about the user experience. And one of the things that the user one of the things that they recorded with the user experience is that um, with affiliate type of mar affiliate marketing offer, it just really goes into the abyss. Once somebody cl clicks on a, a link, then they go off into the abyss, and that's it. There's no, there's no, you know, return visitor value. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's really nothing more that they can, they can judge on. Um, okay. Now, <clears throat> if you take that same approach. I mean, what is you know what's the definition of affiliate market? It's, it's someone who's pushing someone's product to make a profit. Right. Um, there's really, if you look at a retail store, it's there's no difference between an affiliate marketer selling one product and an affiliate store. I'm sorry, a, a retail store selling you know ten or twenty different other manufacturers' product. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so so basically, what I tell affiliates is that, what is your long-term goal for that for that product? You know, is this something that you're, um, is this something you're interested in long term, or is it just the immediate value of that? You know, of that one click will get you this much money. And, yeah, and, and and the arena that I operate in a lot of times it is uh, selling the the latest uh, shiny object and, and then running off to sell something else. I mean, that's not every every niche, but I mean, there's niches you know like pets or whatever education or whatever where. People do focus on one thing for long term, and, and that's good. But there's a lot of other niches where it's just whatever is selling that day, and uh, I, I guess that doesn't really provide a lot of visitor value, does it? Oh, oh, right. I mean, you know, just like just like the same retail store, you know, when they open up their business, they knew for the next two or three years, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna make any money. You know, they they're gonna break even. You know, and, and they know that going into the retail store business, they know that for the first year, for the second year, you know, um, we'll be lucky enough to break even, but we know after the third year we'll be profitable. Um, so, so it's the same kind of mentality. Um, if you really want to play, the if you really want to play with you know with the Google rules behind you know how they look at affiliates, it's really the same way as how they look at you know e-commerce. Okay. Um, and you said, you said something interesting. You said that they're trying to be, uh, become viewed as a trust platform. Uh, I, I know that they're they're concerned that uh, places like Facebook, with approaching 600 million users, uh, scare them. 
uh, <laughs> and they should. Uh, and, and so I, I can certainly understand them, um, you know, try, trying to figure out how they can counter that. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, I mean, they've done, they've done so many different things outside of AdWords and and, and their search platform. Um, you know, they they they've tried to get into the social space with Buzz. You know, that that flatted out. You know, they didn't go anywhere, um, and, and, and rightfully so. I mean, anything that's going to have a large presence of user interactivity, especially with the with the length of time that someone spends on Facebook. You know, it kind of you got it. You have to. I mean, it's it's a competitive world out there. You have to think. You know, well, you know, where's our business going to go? And 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 this is why the the shock um, of the ban. You would think, like, all right, you know, like I said earlier, everyone should, you know, Google should embrace everybody rather than ban them. But they really say, you know what's going to happen at the end of the day? You know, Facebook is going to be a social platform where. People are going to, you know, take the recommendation of their friends. Maybe right. they won't. But you know, at the end of the day, they're still going to want to confide in themselves. Like, for, for example, you you type into Google things that you won't even tell your doctor. Okay. Right. Things that you won't right. tell your friends, your wife. You know, you, you just it's 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 a it's a platform for you to jump off to get something off your chest and just see what other alternatives are out there. So why not, you know, why not become the portal for trust? So when you have someone to trust, you know, why not trust Google? Okay, that makes so, perfect sense. And, and it, it answers a lot of other questions that uh, I, I had in the back of my mind, you know, um, as I look at how, how a business should position itself too in, in using Google. Uh, let's let's look at though uh, at the key aspects that go into a successful Google AdWords campaign, if you don't mind. We, we've been going for about 45 minutes, and so I, I wanted to cover a, a few more topics. Oh, sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, <clears throat> well, well, first and foremost, um, you know, y you really want to you really want to first sit down with yourself and 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 ask yourself you know what you know what is the main goal of my business you know okay i mean it, it really does come down to the basic you know if you're if you're selling uh dog training dvds you know then you have to sit down with yourself look at your site and say does this really paint the picture to anyone that lands on my site does this give a sense of what my site's about uh, google created what's called a site quality team right which is which is different from a landing page quality team, and and the site quality team actually goes and looks at your site, not your landing page, just your site to see if there's uh, unique um, content, easy navigability on your site. Uh, does it provide privacy policy? Um, you know, I mean, all these key elements uh, should be on your website. Just okay. Just so so they've got people who physically go and visit a site that they're not just looking at what's on the landing page they're looking for contact information they're looking for privacy policy and, and all those things like you said right and, and one of the most important thing is transparency you know um, you know if I go to your contact page will it just say you know dog training DVD at gmail dot com or will it tell me this is the business name this is the address this is the email number this is the phone this is the fax okay um, does it have a privacy policy? Does it have, you know, terms of service? Um, you know, all of these stuff they actually look at because they want to be, they want to make sure that you're providing the ultimate transparency to your customer when they come visit your site. They want to know that you're a real person, a real business, and you know, the site itself should be built around the site quality, okay. and the landing page should be built a, a, around the landing page quality. Meaning, you know, if somebody lands on your landing page. And they want to go look at your site, and they can click on the home page or your logo, and they can go to your site, and they can see whatever it is that they need to see. Uh, if you if you're if you're really smart with Google AdWords, you'll have a remarketing code on your landing page, or throughout your site, um, and you know you can get them at a later later date if if they did go off outside the landing page. Okay. So the first thing you really want to do is. Just sit down and really define what your business is about, and then look at your site and see if 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 that is reflecting back to you what your business is about. Okay, and what I'm hearing really is that 
how you use Google AdWords should be a part of a, a long-term plan that it's not really, you know, just trying to get some quick sales. It's getting a customer there, building a relationship with them, and anticipating them coming back uh, and making them visit your site a real experience. Definitely. And, and hoping that, you know, your site quality is it, it's so solid that, you know, you can go and, and, and do the types, uh, you know, you create the types of landing pages that, you know, the direct response, direct response marketers dream of. You know, really creating that, that landing page where you're just telling them, take this particular action. Um, a lot of times I've heard that, hey, you know, my, my, my website doesn't have the content, um, but if I change it like the way you're telling me to change it, then it drops my engagement rate with my with my visitors. I mean, right. they're not going to do what I want them to do. Um, I tell them, no, you know, you can still have that landing page, but the first thing you need to do is really um, look at your entire website and see: Do you have that brochure look and feel? Do you have do you have your navigation where it talks about you, talks about your product, talks about your FAQs, maybe some testimonials? Um, and really not really talk about selling them anything, just really just talk about your information, but then use your landing page as your sales sales page. Um, okay. And, I mean, because we, my niche thinks of, of squeeze pages, thinks of how do I get them to give me their name and email address on that very first visit, and a lot of times, how do I get a sale out of, of them on that first visit? So it's very focused on a, a single purpose and you're really saying that purpose should be to make the site uh, a pleasant enough experience that they'll they'll want to come back and and it'll be an enjoy. It almost sounds like Google is trying to protect the the consumer from bad experiences. They are, but but to to top what you're saying in a, in, in a lighter note, um, no, you can still use the direct response approach because if your website if your website itself is a brochure website talks about what your product is, talks about your service, all that stuff that I was talking to you about about privacy policy and whatnot. Right. Your landing page, okay. So it'll be slash landing page one two three dot html. Your landing page could still have all of those elements that direct uh, response marketer wants to see, um, because that's the landing page. Okay. Okay. Um, what Google does now, um, because <laughs> you know I, I've been I've been challenged on that one too. It's like okay, well we've we've done the we we, we recreated our entire site, um, and we've done the landing page based on our landing uh, on, on you know on the direct response model, um, but we're still not really getting anywhere, you know, or or Google is not serving traffic to that page, because what happened there is that your next your thank you page, right. It, your thank you page cannot be another, you know, go after a hard pitch sales letter or a long page sales letter. It's got it's got to deliver its promise of what you said on that page. Okay. So if if you said that you're going to provide the newsletter or a video, the next page has to first and foremost provide that. And you can't hide the download link it's somewhere buried in the text. Right, right, because these. These uh, you know, their robots and these human reviewers are looking beyond the actual click. So, so, so while while you still have that element, the direct response model in place, you have to make sure your thank you page delivers on the on the promise, and then your overall strategy, your site, just needs to you know it just needs to be if someone wanted more information. Okay. I mean, I, I only look at the site. Uh, I, I don't pay attention to the site once I I develop it. I once it's developed, you know, it's a brochure site. That's what I'm about. I'm not going to change my business model for the next two years. That's what it is. Let me start focusing on landing pages. Okay. 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 And, and that's where you really, really start seeing, uh, you know, um, the, the the meat of what AdWords can do for your business. Um, and, and, what, yeah, I, I was leading into what they can do for your business. Even as you you start building that business, one of the things you want to do is you want to to to, to gather data. Even if you want to generate a lot a lot of your traffic organically. You still need. You still should be out buying traffic to get the data, right? Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? Well, you know, even if you're you're focused on on uh, doing SEO, basically, right? Uh, you know, why is it the key to still buy traffic to get the data? 
Well, you know, with with when you talk about SEO, I, I mean, I, I never, uh, like I said, you have to have uh, multiple resources in your basket. You, you can't just have one. Um, what I say is start with AdWords and identify what I like to call your your optimal conversion funnel, okay. which is you know this particular uh, keyword, this particular ad, um, this particular landing page. These elements are the optimal conversion funnel, um, and th this is where I want to take it to TV, radio, SEO, PPV, all those other traffic. I know that converts for me. Can you imagine doing an SEO on your site, and you finally get to the first page, and that you know, so what? You get clicks, but it doesn't do anything for you. Right. <laughs> you know, so so yeah, definitely. I you know I encourage that you know you you buy you buy traffic and you optimize your conversion funnel and then you go into other platforms like SEO okay and, and for those who don't understand SEO what i think of it as as things you do to your site and off page uh, that help your site to rank higher in the search engines typically organically uh, you know what the, the the search engines just on their own determine your site is about a certain topic because of things you've done to it. Right. Hey, we've already talked about some of the new features uh, from Google that, that you're, you're most excited about, but let's touch on a few more. I, I know there's things like what mobile and all that type of stuff. Oh yeah, I mean so, some of the things that I'm excited about, I mean we touched on remarketing. I mean I'm, I'm mostly, mostly excited about you know the what you can do with remarketing, but other things that I'm excited about, you know, is is really how they've positioned themselves in all sorts of different frontiers. One of them is being local. Um, you know, you know, they've got, you know, they've always had geo targeting, but now they have even uh, particular IP targeting where someone, uh, well, they'll detect if 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 the searcher is typing uh, a particular keyword nationwide. Right. Uh, you know about your area, so it's it re it really did get you know, and this just came out recently. This came out you know just a couple of weeks ago. Um, th there's a lot more you can do being a local business right now. Um, the other thing I'm really mostly excited about is the extension. Um, they've got four extensions uh, for search, which is product uh, extension, site extension, uh, phone extension, and location extension. Okay. Which basically means um, when you do a search on um, on Google.com, let's say you type in the same example dog training DVD. Uh, now, if your ad shows up, you, your ad can show up with additional real estate. It can have the product image that you're selling. Okay. Okay. It can have um, particular uh, 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 landing pages on your site, so you can talk about. Uh, features about us or a particular product as a site link under okay. your ad. Uh, you can have a phone number where you know it's there. People can just give you a call. Um, and location, if you especially if you're a local business, so as we talked about, uh, it'll show you uh, the map of where you're located or the address. And, so, and all those you know, are pretty powerful. And, and all those actually also play into the smart technology like the smart phone you know if you've got a web page with the phone number on it people can often just touch that and it will dial the phone number or they can touch the map image and it'll pull up a map for them right on the web page so right if you if you if you segment a campaign just for mobile the beautiful thing about that is you can have a click to call campaign um, or you know you can enable call metrics to see exactly how many people um, you know actually called and it's really cool. I mean, the advent of smartphones is really just, you know, it's great. I mean, um, you know, people can call right from their phones. They can get the information right there and then. Um, and you have all of that data um, that's measured inside of your AdWords account. Uh, and, and that's really cool. And the other thing I'm excited about, and we'll just I'll leave it at that, is the rich media ads. Um, you can actually have your products um, listed inside of um, the banners that Google provides you. So if you're going off onto, let's say you do a remarketing campaign, right. and you have multiple offers, you can just use their display ad builder and put in, you know, multiple promotions, multiple image of promotions. Right. And you can let the user select it from there. 
Wow, that's pretty you know, powerful. Yeah, it's it's really powerful. And we're getting down to about five minutes to go. I imagine we could go over just a few minutes, but I, I we promised the, the uh, attendees that we'd go for an hour, so I don't want to go over too much. Um, how, how long does it take to distinguish whether an online marketing campaign will be profitable or not, though? I mean, how long should you keep running an ad before you decide to pull it, basically? Um, well, you know, I mean, with, with AdWords, like I said, you really need to just get to the core of your business first. And you know, if if you just don't have the you know the, the, the cash to compete with other competitors right. based on your marketplace, and you want to take it slow, so let's say the twenty dollars a day example that we talked about a diet niche, right? <clears throat> that can take a, you know that can take six seven months maybe longer to really understand um, where you want to be. I mean, the the idea really is within ninety days for any mark for any campaigns, you'll know where you stand. Okay. So I just want to answer that off the top. You'll know where you stand, especially if you're doing it correctly. So, so, um, so you want to test, and within 90 days, if you see that you're doing it correctly, that's when you want to basically turn up the volume. Correct. But in, in, in the case of where, you know, let's just be realistic, if, you have, if, you, if you're entering a, a huge market and you have a small budget, um, you know, you're, you're looking at the data coming in, you know, favorably or not in, in, in a case where, uh, you know, when we do this, it's definitely favorable because we go after the longer, longer tail and a very, very specific uh, landing page. Right. Um, to compete into into the larger keywords, the larger volume keywords. Right. You, you know, you're looking at a longer term, like maybe within seven to eight months, maybe longer, depending on you know you want to be able to make sure that the longer tail keywords are profitable to get to that stage. Especially okay. so if you if you had. If you had a much higher, you know, if you if you have a much higher um, ad spend, then that's a different story. You're looking at running it, uh, to getting enough clicks to make the data meaningful and enough data points. Oh yeah, a 90 days is more than enough. Okay, I mean, if you get enough clicks, if you're only spending twenty dollars, you may not be getting, you know, may not be getting enough clicks there. So you, you'll know you'll know where you stand because if you if you if you do twenty dollars a day and you go after. Um, you know, uh, uh, diet method, for example. Right. Uh, the keyword diet method, and that has, let's say, ninety thousand searches. Um, your your ads won't show. Okay. I mean, it'll it'll probably show in the beginning, but it'll trickle to nothing, and you're not going to get meaningful data. Okay. So, so it's really important that you 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 know you really sit down, understand how you can uh, you know just get into the game. Okay. Now I opened up this call by pointing out I used to do pay per click a lot, but I, I now I don't do it because it's more work that I want to do, and so it, to me it makes more sense to get someone else to do it. And I, I understand that you have a uh, pay per click management service. Can you tell our our audience a little about that? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, it's it's called AdWords PPC, and you know, AdWords PPC is not just another AdWords management company. You know, we you know we're more than just that. Uh, we pride ourselves to be business process experts first, okay. and then combining that, and then using our Google advertising skills to really hone in on on on, on the advertiser. And we, you know, the philosophy we have in my company is that any clients that we take on, you know, they we need to feel the true partnership. I mean, we okay. need to really understand their business. Um, you know, we take the time to really understand the core nature of the business itself, and then we build a campaign from there. I mean, we we do all the research of the of the marketplace, we do all the research of the competitors, um, we build out based on the the ad spend that they're willing to start off with. We you know we build out keywords and we look at their website and we make suggestions and we really like it, it's as if we own it. So. You know, we want to make sure we understand their business goals, one hundred and ten percent. So, you, so you're not you're not just managing their pay per click campaign. You're actually giving them a consultation. You're looking at are you targeting the right keywords. You're looking at their marketing plan and looking at the the environment they're operating in. Oh, definitely. I mean, w when they when they come to us, um, you know, we require them to fill out a in depth questionnaire. And from there, we actually begin the consultation process. And if we can help them, you know, because we are very selective, we want to right. make sure that their expectation is managed. And you know, we want to be able to, you know, make sure that we're all fully aware of the 
the power that AdWords have, but at the same time, um, we want to understand their overall business goals. So we take that we take that all into consideration. Yeah, I understand that completely. I when I used to do pay per click, I had people that wanted to rank on words like hotmail, and so uh, you know. <laughs> It is managing expectations too, and being realistic. You know, wanting your your customers, your clients, to target the words that are what their ideal customers will be looking for. Their buying customers. So that's that's excellent. Um, oh, oh yeah, and those who who actually go through our consultation process, they uh, a lot of them who 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 feel that maybe they're just not ready right now because of where they are in their business. Um, you know, I have yet to hear someone not taking immense amount of value out of the consultation process and and that alone you know we could charge but Excellent. we don't <laughs> and I, I do have a I think the next slide will we'll give them your URL to check you out but uh, I did want to ask you know um, why shouldn't any business owner ignore Google I mean uh, a lot of business owners you know for whatever reason they're not on Google and we already talked about the fact that people can find them on they're on, in Google Maps and on the phone and just all over the place. It, you know, just one list and can get them all over Google. I mean, there, there's there's been studies that have been shown that um, you know for for offline businesses that you know their customers have researched them online first right. before they even walked into their to their establishment. So you know, right right there it tells you something. You know, I mean, you, you cannot ignore Google, whether, you know, you have a places page or, um, you know, you, you've optimized your site for SEO or, you know, you, you pay for traffic and you be there for the branding aspect of it. Uh, Google shouldn't be ignored for everything we've talked about. I mean, it is the platform where a lot of people go there and they type certain things. They wouldn't tell anybody. They really, you know, it's, it's, it, it, Google is, you know, the trust platform, as I've alluded to. And right. I mean, I, I know that when I have a question, I certainly I, I just type in the question, and, and Google even suggests you know the right words to type in. So people do go looking for answers at Google more often than they turn to the yellow pages and things like that. And, and so you do need to be there. Oh, definitely. And and you know, with, with with Facebook and and all the other advantages that are out there for ads, especially at a, at a low cost. Right. I mean, it, it really boils down to how you take uh, where in the buying cycle um, are you gathering these uh, these visitors and you know when you look at all the other traffic methods you're really catching them at the at the beginning stage or if not you know no you know in 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 a no stage I would say right right because you're distracting them and you're you're getting them into your funnel at the very beginning stage Excellent. With Google you have the choice you know, you catch them in the middle. You can catch them at, at towards the end. Um, you know, using display network, you can catch them in the beginning. But you have the option. And I imagine part of your your survey process actually determines where your client wants to capture that customer in the buying process too. Oh, definitely, Excellent. definitely. Because you do have to know where the customer is in order to know what to put in front of them. Uh, we we are. Uh, running out of time, so I did want to let people know that uh, you mentioned uh, you do f free consultations and you'll look at um, their the client's AdWord needs if they don't feel that they should be doing pay-per-clicks themselves, and I personally think it's quite a bit of work and would rather have someone else do it. Uh, I, I do want to encourage people to check out your site, which is at adwordsppc.com forward slash leads. That's adwordsppc.com forward slash leads and that's all lowercase and uh, you'll be dealing with uh, A.M. Khan who uh, is a Google AdWords um, management expert and, and has a, a full staff uh, who, who can devote the time and attention and, and expertise that you need to, to really manage your campaign and get a nice steady flow of buying customers which is what you really want. Oh, definitely, and you know, I mean, we we've also developed softwares, and you know, we also consult with a lot of advertise uh, advertising agencies as well. So, you know, I mean, we we definitely pride ourselves to 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 be, to being the one stop shop for AdWords, um, and and really, that's all we do. You know, um, and if if they come through the slash leads, you know, I personally will be the one 
looking at everything and, and contacting them directly. Excellent, excellent. So I do encourage the, the listeners and the viewers to go and check out your site. Uh, and, I mean, you, you can to have an expert look over your AdWords campaign in itself is worth quite a bit to me. And to make sure you're targeting the right keywords, you're not wasting your time. It, it's just... It just makes perfect sense to me. So uh, go ahead and check out uh, AM Con site, and uh, it, it's a, it, in, in this economy, you, you can't afford not to be on Google and to be where your customers are actually looking for answers to their problems. Basically, if you're not there, that they're, uh, they're not finding you. And so, and they do often start their search right on Google. You need to be there. That's correct. And, and Willie, thank you for putting this together. And again, um, you know, uh, go to adwordsppc.com forward slash leads. Um, and you know, I mean, once you once you fill out the questionnaire, uh, when you contact us initially, we'll send you a questionnaire. Once you fill that out, it really is, um, you know, you'll get a lot of insight uh, for your business and where you should be with Google AdWords. Thank you very much, A.M., and thanks to all of our uh, uh, listeners and viewers for joining us. Sorry I didn't get to uh, any additional questions, but also didn't notice many coming in. So thank you, and uh, you guys have a great evening. Thank you.